Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll be answering the question that I get asked a lot. How do you stay productive as a full-time designer and content creator? I use an app called Notion, you might have heard of it. And in today's video, I'll be sharing my Notion setup that I use for work and for planning my content on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. For the past six months, I've been using Notion every single day to keep track of my to-do list. And it's helped me tremendously to stay more consistent on my social platforms. So I was super stoked when Notion hit me of and wanted to sponsor this video. You can sign up for Notion for free using my link down below. Notion is great because it's super customizable, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. So in today's video, I'll only be talking about features that I find most useful. And I've also created templates to share with you all uh, that I created that are simple and easy to manage. So let's get straight into the video. To your left are the three pages that I've created. I visit my agenda the most, so I put it at the top. Then I have everything related to my full-time job, Instacart, and then my content calendar. Let's first talk about my agenda. This is what I visit the most on a given week or day. And I have my three priorities for the week. If I get these three things done, then I'm good to go for the week. I don't really have to take care of all the other things. Prioritization is key to managing your time well, so that you're moving all the big things that will bring you results instead of doing 10 different things that don't really bring you results. The first thing I want to mention is if you click the three dots on your right, you can customize your page with different font styles. You can also go full width or disable that. I like having full width because then I can optimize more space on the page. Then I've broken down all the days into blocks. I've also created a button, this is pretty cool, where every time I click this row, it pops up a to-do list. And how you do that is you click on this icon here and um, you name the button. So here I put add a task, but maybe it's to-do list, right? Um, I'm gonna go with add a task. And then this is the thing that it will create when you click on this row. So here I have a to-do list, but you can change this into maybe a bulleted list. So if I do that, and every time I click on this, you'll make a bulleted list. So this comes in handy when you want to duplicate a certain action and you don't want to create it every single time. You just create a button and make it do a certain thing and it will populate the row that you want to populate. So every day I will go in and add a task. Once I complete a task, uh, I will, let's say on Monday, I have to go to the USPS. I'll complete the task. And then after the day is over, I will drag this to archive so that my Monday is cleared out. Saturday is usually my rest day and I try not to do any type of work, but clearly uh, I'm not committing to my rest day that well. So if you want to drag all your three tasks into archive, you can just click select all of them and drop it into archive. Very simple. Archive is just a page, so if you want to get rid of this, you can. I just leave it there. You can also change the style of this text. So if I click on this, I can change the color of the background or the color of the font. I've also added a Pomodoro timer. So this is how I did it. I went to the Pomodoro timer that I use every single day. I copy the link and then I paste the link create embed and it'll populate the timer on the page itself and what's cool is you can also move this block around so if i want it to be next to my week's priorities i'll find the blue bar and drop it in and i can also adjust the size so that it's not taking up too much space voila and if i want to undo that i can just command z everything the one thing that took me forever to learn is sometimes creating blocks is difficult so let's say i want to create meal plan and here i'm gonna create workout plan i've been doing chloe ting's workout it is intense anyone else doing chloe ting okay so sometimes i will try to move this block next to meal plan find the blue line and it'll create this gap and i didn't know how to get rid of it it's very easy you just click on the rows and put it underneath meal plan. You can also change the cover of the banner. If I wanted to look at cookies, I can pull cookies from Unsplash and it'll change the banner. 
But because that's very dangerous, I will crave cookies all day. I will command Z and go back to my pastel sky. Now let's check out my Instacart workspace. Instacart actually doesn't use Notion at all. We use Google products and Atlassian products to manage our products. But I created this page in case it's useful for anyone who needs more structure and is curious to see how I go about managing my tasks as a designer. So at the top, I have priorities for the week. If you want to change the style of the row here, you can use this drop down. Maybe I want to make this a call out, which creates this gray background with an emoji and you can change the emoji to something else. This week I'm working on iterating designs for project day based on feedback, holding design walkthrough with engineers and PM and creating a prototype. So I break down these three priorities into more granular tasks uh, that I update on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to schedule a design walkthrough on the calendar, clean up my Figma file and explore more designs for the pills that I'm working on. And I've also created a design doc template that I'm really excited for you to use. If you click on this row, create design doc, it will create a doc if it will load. And this is a template that I've used over the years. So I will include a project name. Uh, let's say instant cash out. That's something that I did two years ago at Instacart. And I'll put that was quarter three, 2021. I find it really important to document my design process and any discussions that we have around how we've reached the final designs because there will be times where something gets brought up and no one has any idea why we decided to go a certain route over another direction. And so having a history of all those conversations has been really helpful. So on your left, you have table of contents. I added this by using the slash, searching for a table of contents and it'll pre-populate the table of contents. I also have a section for the team. This is handy when someone else is taking over this project and they have a specific question they wanna ask but they don't know who to go to. And then any important links uh, that are relevant for this project. Then we go into the problem, context, goals, and solution. So for problem, what are we trying to solve here? We can list both user and business problems. Context, what is the current state of affairs that will help us better understand the problem space? You can add any previous research or any data you have that uh, gives you a better understanding of the problem space. Goals, what goals do users and business have? So for business, it can be, we want to increase conversion rate. Solution, what are all the possible solutions we can think of? I always like to put out like three to four solutions and options that we can explore. I will generally write out a user flow and some of the pros and cons of each of the options and maybe add an image here. So it's really easy to add an image on Notion. You just drag and drop and voila, you have an image. The notes section is where I keep track of all the decisions, discussions, feedback that I get from design critiques, leads meetings. I will usually consolidate all the feedback. How I created this design dog is I went to this configure template button and I basically dropped in a page that I had as a template. And every time I click on this row, it creates that template for me. Let's say I want to create a different template called normal page. Let's just call it normal page. And I want to create this normal page every time I click on this button. Then what I can do is I'm gonna drop that in and move this somewhere else. So every time I click it, it'll populate just a normal page. Now other docs, I've also included a one-on-one -on -one doc that you can use. This is very similar to what I use with my manager, uh, what I've also used in other companies. So I will copy and paste this section here for every week. This is also in reverse chronological order so that the most recent week is at the top. I will list out what I'm working on this week, uh, any wins that I have, questions or concerns, and a place where the manager can also write out what they wanna talk about during the one-on-one. -on -one. This is an example of what a typical week could look like. I have a notification update that I'm doing. I'm reviewing the copy changes with the design team and cross-functional partners. I'm also doing early explorations for instant cash out. A win is I did a great job during all hands. 
Uh, questions, concerns, I'm spread too thin. I need help prioritizing work stream. So we'll talk about how we can better prioritize my work stream. Um, and if the manager can do anything to help out. I've also included a design roadmap that you can use as a template. This is not the only way to go about things, but if you decide to use a design roadmap, these are projects and these are links to the design doc. So if you are using this, then you probably don't need this because this design doc and this design doc, the templates are exactly the same. I will go over each of the properties of this table. So these are the projects. This is the priority. So in tech, there's P0, P1, P2, and P3. I didn't know what these were until I started working at Instacart. P0 is like, fire, drop everything and work on this. P1 is, it's important, but it's not urgent. Underneath status, you can choose not started, discovery, lo-fi, hi-fi, user testing, review, handoff, QA, launched. If I wanted to do multi-select, I could just go into property type and select multi-select. Sizing, uh, we call this t-shirt sizing. So week one would be considered small. A few days would be considered X small. Medium is two to three weeks. Large is like three to five weeks. Excel is like probably an entire quarter or longer. So for date, you can either choose one date or you can choose an end date and it shows up like this. This is where you can access your Figma files. You can open the link using this. Now, if you want to view this on a different view, you can add a view and here you, you can have a gallery, calendar. So I've already created the calendar view, which we're gonna see right now and you can see we are going to work on notification update for monday tuesday wednesday and then insta cash out from thursday friday and the following week if i find these attributes a little bit distracting i can go into these three dots go to properties enable more or i can disable we're going to go back to our table view you can also sort your table so here i have dates ascending order if I want to do by t-shirt sizing, I can do that. Size, ascending, yes. And if you want to create a new project in this design roadmap, you can create a template for the design roadmap and it'll pre-populate the template that I created that you can download. For some reason, I'm having issues. Okay, there we go. We have this template pop up, store, selector. Totally making this up. And then Q2 2021, fill this out and fill this out and you're ready to go. It's created, see, look. And then I have the notes section where I just brain dump all the notes that I'm taking during my one-on-ones or meetings. And then at the end of the day, I will consolidate all of my notes and maybe put them on my design doc or other relevant docs where I need to document some of the conversations that I was having with other people. The last page is my content calendar. So this is an entire database of all my content ideas for YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. On the left, I have all the content ideas or titles of the videos that I'm gonna post. And then I have the platform. So sometimes they are just Instagram posts or sometimes they're both Instagram and TikTok or just YouTube videos. The status indicates where I'm at in terms of if I'm drafting it, scripting it, if it's ready to film, if I'm filming it, editing, or if it's already published. Film date is when I will actually film the video and draft date is when I'll have the video ready. Sometimes I'll write the sponsor and the category and the link to the video. If I want to not see any of my published video, I can add a filter by clicking on status is not published. And then if you want to sort this table by the published date, which I think is already the case, but let's check. I can do that by publish ascending. This is an order of the published date. So this is where all my content lives. But if I want to see Instagram specific content, I can create a view and customize that. So this is an Instagram specific content. I just created a view. I add a view, created IG table, and that's how I got this page. So in this page, I'm gonna make this Instagram specific. So what I'm gonna do is filter out YouTube. So the platform does not contain YouTube, right? And you can adjust the width of each of the properties 
and sometimes it'll cut off the words. So what you can do is you go to the three dots, you wrap cells. Now I can have a different view for my all encompassing database. So this is the Kanban board. Um, if I don't have anything as no status, I can just hide this. So right now I am working on how to be productive as a designer and YouTuber. So I am filming it right now. So I'm just going to move that. And then if you want to not see all these properties, you can go into properties and enable or disable any of the properties. Now let's go back to the main table. If I want to create a new video, I can create a template and automatically it'll populate. Come on. What's going on? Okay, I will show you how it's templatized. I have the title section where I usually jot down four to five title ideas. I use a tool called TubeBuddy and vidIQ to optimize my titles so that it's SEO friendly, so that people are actually searching for the videos that I'm making. This has been a huge help for my YouTube growth. So if you want to check those tools out, I will link them in the description down below. I also have uh, some thumbnail ideas because thumbnails are very important. And then I have the intro, the body, what I'm going to talk about and everything else that's important. If you do decide to download my template and it's useful, do tag me on Instagram and I will give you a shout out and some love there. And I can't wait to see all of y'all's Notion templates and how you use Notion.